recording and uh, first of all thank you to professor suman sharif for giving me the opportunity the topic is sabr rakhna hamre jaye professor dr mohammad al jaldi from lahore jinnah ustad lahore uh it's a fairly um, known subject and uh, it's a very uh, one of the new surgical emergencies and it should be having that uh, efficiently so sabr rakhna hamre jaye new surgical emergency and hemorrhage is in the subarachnoid space less common but an important cause of stroke its etiology uh, um, head injury or head trauma is one of the most common cause but we are discussing toward today the spontaneous uh, sudden hemorrhage which is usually due to rupture of aneurysm which is usually a secular aneurysm other causes include bleeding from the vascular marrow formation avm and extension of the subarachnoid uh, sub subarachnoid space from a primary intracerebral hem- hemorrhage myocardial aneurysm mostly result from the infected emboli due to bacterial endocarditis causing causing septic degeneration of arteries and subsequent dilatation and rupture secular uh, barrier aneurysm autopsy and angiography studies have found that about 2% of adults harbor intracranial aneurysms size is usually 2 mm to 2 to 3 cm average size is 7.5 mm those which rupture are usually 10 mm or more but smaller one can also get ruptured uh, different shapes and forms r- round connected to the parent artery by a narrow stalk this is called the neck some other may also be broad based so this is the barrierism on um, having a neck and uh, the other is a uh, fusiform dilatation uh, as well barrierism is usually elongated uh, these are the various types of the cerebral aneurysms uh, showing neck and uh, its fundus mechanism of formation of aneurysm one theory is that there is result a developmental deficiency in the media and elastica other theory say that aneurysm process is initiated by the focal destruction of the internal elastic membrane caused by hemodynamic forces acting on at bifurcation and branching arteries as a result of local weakness in the vessel intima intima uh, bulges out covered by adventitia sac gradually in, in, enlarges for patients of subarachnoid hemorrhage who arrive alive at hospital the mortality rate is next uh, about 45 minutes 45% of those who survive more than 50% are left with major neurological deficit as a result of the initial hemorrhage cerebral vasospasm with infarction or hydrocephalus secular or barrier aneurysm the patient who survive but aneurysm is obliterated and rate of rebleed is 20% in the first 2 weeks 30% in the first 1 month and 3% per year uh, annual risk of rupture of aneurysm of less than 10 mm is 0.1 and for aneurysm more than 10 is 0.5 to 1 the surgical morbidity rate far exceed these percentages uh secular aneurysm joint aneurysm they may be more than 2.5 cm diameter accounts for 5% of cases the three most common locations are terminal internal carotid artery middle cerebral artery bifurcation and uh, top of the basilar artery so the risk of rupture is 6% in the first year after identification and may remain high indefinitely they often cause symptoms of compression of the brain or cranial nerves these are this uh, aneurysm pathophysiology secular aneurysm occur at the bifurcation of large to medium sized uh, intracranial arteries rupture into subarachnoid space into the basal cistern or into the parenchyma of the adjacent brain approximately 25% of aneurysm occur in the anterior circulation and most of them are on the circle of villus about 20% patient have multiple aneurysms may at mirror image sites as well 
this is the circle of village showing the various uh, aneurysm at various places. And uh, as I told earlier, 85% are at the anterior circulation. Aneurysm are seldom seen in children on autopsy. So SH in children is rare. Beyond childhood, they gradually increase in size and frequently rupture increase between 35 to 65 years of age. There is increased incidence of polycystic kidneys, fibromuscular dysplasias of extracranial arteries, myoma, myoma disease, AVM formation, correction of aorta. These are associated diseases which may be a cause of the uh, aneurysms. Numerous studies have documented that familial occurrence of secular aneurysm and support of the idea that genetic factor may play a role in their development. Pathophysiology uh, continued, the aneurysm develops typically from uh, a neck with the dome. At the site of rupture, most often dome wall thins out and tear that allow the bleeding often 0.5 millimeter long. Aneurysm size and site are important in the predicting risk of rupture. Those more than seven millimeter of diameter and those at the top of basilar artery and those at the region of posterior communicating artery are at a greater risk of rupture. These are again um, blood clot uh, flowing from the aneurysm rupture and it is from the uh, fundus or the peripheral part of the aneurysm. And also showing the vasospasm here, the three most common complication of aneurysm are uh, rebleed, vasospasm, and hydrocephalus. We will discuss ahead. So clinical manifestation, one of them is the most unruptured and intracranial aneurysms are completely asymptomatic. And aneurysm who goes small ruptures and lead to blood in the subcranial space, so-called sentinel, sentinel bleeds. Symptoms are often due to rupture and resultant subcranial pressure. Although some present a mass effect on the cranial nerves, or brain parenchyma. Uh, the headache is usually uh, severe and vomiting, and sometimes patient become unconscious as well. Severe generalized headache occurs suddenly. Patient remain lucid with the varying degrees of neck stiffness. Rarely patient suddenly becomes unconscious without any preceding complaint. Uh, in these rapidly evaluating cases, bleed is so massive that intracranial uh, pressure approaches systemic blood pressure, thus really compromising the cerebral perfusion. In uh, less severe cases, conscious patients remain conscious, uh, or if lost, may be regained in minutes to hours. Residual doziness, confusion, and amnesia accompanied by severe headache may persist for several days in the less severe cases. And so usually uh, patient occur when the patient is active. In some cases, may occur while uh, uh, straining on stool or uh, sexual intercourse or lifting of heavy weight or some other sustained exertions. In patients who survive initial rupture, the most feared complication is rupture, uh, re uh, rebleed, which may occur any time from minutes to two, three weeks. Headache, 45% cases, severe headache associated with uh, falling complaints. For example, patient often call headache the worst headache of my life. Similarly, uh, the characteristic or sudden and sudden unexplained headache at any location should raise suspicion of some kind of hemorrhage and must be investigated. Headache usually generalized often with neck stiffness and vomiting is common. Pain at other sites, occipital, posterior cervical pain, and sign of posterior inferior cerebellar pica uh, bleed. Pain in or around the eyes and low temple can occur with ex expanding MC aneurysms. Loss of consciousness. Uh, this is when there is a, 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 a rapid loss of blood due to bleeding from the aneurysm site. This may account for sudden transient loss of consciousness or they may nearly half the patient which may precede by the headache. In 10% cases, aneurysm bleed is severe enough to cause loss of consciousness for several days. Among the clinical uh, manifestation, focal deficit, anterior cerebral artery or MCA bifurcation may rupture into the adjacent 
brain or subcutaneous space and form a hematoma large enough to pursue, produce the mass effect. Uh, similarly, third nerve palsy, ptosis, diplopia, dilatation of pupil, divergent squint, indicate aneurysm, that is the injunction of the posterior communicating artery and posterior cerebral arteries. Sixth nerve palsy may indicate aneurysm in the cavernous sinus, but uni or bilateral palsy could be because of the raised ICP. Unilateral blindness indicate aneurysm lying intermediately and the circle of willness usually at the region of ophthalmic artery. Transient precess of the one or both lower limbs indicate anterior communicating artery. Aneurysm that has interfered with the circulation of anterior cerebral arteries. Hemiplesis or aphasia suggestive of aneurysm at the first bifurcation of middle cerebral artery. Differential diagnosis. Mm, the headache is usually very uh, severe and uh, it's sometimes thunder, collab, headache, a variant of migraine that simulates subcranial hemorrhage. And similarly, the headache of explosive onset may also be caused by ingestion of sympathomatic drugs or ingestion of tyramine containing food. The patient who is taking MUO inhibitors Sudden severe headache may also be a symptom of uh, pheochromocytoma. Cerebral venous thrombosis, diffuse venous spasm, pituitary apoplexy, intracranial or extracranial dissection, hypertensive encephalopathy. These are conditions may be uh, mimicking the subcranial hemorrhage. Uh, but usually the sudden severe headache uh, associated uh, with the Subcranial hemorrhage is accomplished by the neck stiffness, which is uh, usually, uh, uh, and, and also there is a uh, vomiting in subcranial hemorrhage, while neck stiffness may not be in other few conditions. So definite workup for the aneurysm is always required in the form of CT scan, lumbar puncture, and the diagnosis still remain doubtful, then cerebral angiography is required. Delayed neurological deficit may be, uh, Major causes of delayed neurological deficit: rebleed, hydrocephalus, vasospasm, and hyponatremia. Rebleed is the most dangerous, and it should be uh, uh, more common in the first few days and first two weeks, and uh, uh, its incidence decreases after one month. And uh, rebleed is associated with 60% mortality rate. Hydrocephalus is another grave uh, complication, and that should be dealt efficiently and they may lead to stupor, comma, and uh, even death can occur if it's not that accordingly. So subcute hypercampus develop gradually and also that by ventricular drainage or the shunts, etc. Chronic hydrocampus may develop due, uh, you know, over the months and can be dealt by the, uh, like just like NPH by hydrocampus, uh, shunt, etc. Vasospasm is another drastic complication and it should be managed accordingly uh, to prevent the ischemic defects to the brain. And uh, in most of the cases, the wave span can be prevented by demodipine, a calcium channel blocker, giving adequate fluid, maintaining blood pressure, and keeping the patient sedated. Hyponatremia is another complication that can be given, uh, treated by the giving uh, uh, adequate fluids and uh, daily checkup of the electrolytes and maintaining the good blood pressure. Uh, coming toward the investigation, CT scan is the investigation of choice and uh, lumbar puncture is almost uh, not done nowadays because CT scan is performed within 48 hours, it can be very much diagnostic. So then we can go for the definitive investigation that is angiography. Uh, previously, it was said the DSA is the gold standard, but nowadays uh, you can get much more information by the CTA as well, and we can decide with CTA geography. Uh, similarly, in some cases, when the CTA is uh, not giving this uh, required in, in information, you information, can go, you can for, go the for the DSA, which is still the gold standard test. So these are the lab investigation, echo, and the treatment is regarding the management of uh, subcranial hemorrhages same airways, blood pressure, and preventing for the re-bleed and uh, 
Vidospasm, hydrocephalus, hyponatremia, and permeabolism. Similarly, another complication is the seizures. So we have to give the prophylactic and uh, anti epileptics. And as regards the visual spasm, we have to give this calcium channel blocker, nematopene is the drug of choice. For hydrocephalus, of course, you can go for the uh, ventricular drainage by shunt or EVD. Role of steroid is also there. It, it is said that it may help to reduce the next stiffness and resolve the initial effects uh, of the subclinical hemorrhage. Uh, then for assessment, hunt and us scale, uh, it is very important and for the grading and as well for management. Grade one and two are should be an uh, intervention should be ideally within 24 hours. Grade three patient, uh, they should be treated initially conservatively to convert into grade two or one. And uh, similarly, grade four, they must be treated initially conservatively. So uh, the best option for the treatment is one is the clipping. For example, clip is being applied here. The other option is endovascular techniques. So in summary, the it's a neurosurgical emergency, subrogal hemorrhage is a neurosurgical emergency. It should be dealt accordingly, uh, very efficiently, preferably in the ICU setting and uh, we should proceed for the CT scan uh, as much as early possible to make the diagnosis. And we have to prevent the many, the three most important complication that is the rebleach, uh, vasospasm and hydrocephalus efficiently. Thank you very much.